Hello and welcome to the History Department's presentation on the Renaissance. The definition of this, it was a period of European cultural, artistic, political and economic rebirth following the Middle Ages, uh, generally described as taking place in the 14th to the 17th centuries. It's a tremendously interesting period and I hope that after the presentation you'll have a much better understanding of it. Now if you look at the, the slide in front of you, you can see two pictures. On the left it's from a fresco in a church painted in the 13th century and on the right, uh, nearly 1300 years before, is a picture of a couple found in the ruins of Pompeii. Uh, now I think you'll agree that the picture on the right is much more uh, artistically impressive. You can sort of sense the personality in the way that you can't with the picture on the left. So there had been almost no improvements in the quality of art for over a thousand years. Um, but the Renaissance changes all that. First of all, let's talk about writing though. And the Gutenberg Bible in 1450 marks a real transition in terms of information technology. Uh, it's the first printed Bible. And now not just Bibles, but anything written could be printed. So you have an explosion of information and explosion of ideas. Uh, and this is to have all sorts of consequences and ramifications. Um, but it's important that you're aware of, of that particular development, similar to the internet today, in terms of its impact. Now, there were other key influences on why the Renaissance happened. And one of those was Islamic scholarship. Islam, um, a young religion, was intensely curious about the wider world and the conquest of Alexandria led to the, the library there being read and information also being taken to the House of Wisdom in Baghdad. You can see a picture there. There were also massive uh, developments in mathematics, uh, algebra, algorithms, both words from the Arabic, but also the, uh, the, new, the, the, new, the number system, um, which is called the, um, the Hindu-Arabic number system taken from India. Uh, Hindu scholars came up with it between the 1st and the 4th century and then it was developed further by Arabic scholars in the 8th and 9th centuries and it formed the basis for mathematics which enabled so many more developments in architecture and but also in art as well and understanding of perspective etc. The term renaissance means rebirth, rebirth of knowledge and it was primarily the rebirth of classical knowledge uh, which marks the, the Renaissance. Uh, so you've got in this slide uh, a picture you can see in the background of uh, some Greek sculpture and the Greeks really celebrated the, the human form. On the right you've got I think it's an example of Roman architecture. So this is all around Italy and therefore it's not surprising that Italy was the place where the Renaissance really took off. This is a slide with Michelangelo's David on it. Um, and this, you can clearly see, was influenced by Greek architectural styles um, in terms of its celebration of the human body. Now you may be wondering, why did the Renaissance start in Italy? Well, it's a number of factors. One is geographical. If you look at the map on the right, you can see how Italy really is in the center of the Mediterranean and therefore it gets influence from the Middle East and we've talked about the importance of um, Islamic learning well that was coming across through the Mediterranean and Italy obviously picked up on that as well uh, you've also got the fact that if you look at the map on the left there are a number of Italian city-states and at this time they're becoming increasingly prosperous but also they were rivals and we'll talk about that in the next couple of slides and how that impacted developments in the Renaissance. Now a good example of a city-state is Florence. Florence became extremely wealthy in this period, largely a result of developing techniques in banking um, and Cosimo de' Medici was a good example of this. He made a fortune from being a banker but also as a politician as well he had huge influence. He's one of the leading families in Florence. Um, and he wanted to show off his wealth by paying or commissioning works of art, including portraits of himself. 
And if you look at the left, you can see the florin, the unit of currency. Um, another reason behind Florence's wealth, it developed currencies, banking systems. I think accounting as well was developed in Florence. Um, so all these factors led to an explosion in wealth. But also, there were other city-states that were also trying to rival Florence and therefore sponsoring their own artists, which led to this flourishing of, of art uh, in this period. Now there was warfare going on between the Italian city-states and this led to developments in, in science um, as more and more complicated weapons were developed. And in fact, Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, their, their main role actually was as military architects and engineers. And art was almost a sideline and quite often they, they got well known to these families because they'd started off as military engineers. So that's another factor behind the Renaissance taking place in Italy in this period. Now this is the final slide looking at the Italian Renaissance and of course the most famous painting to emerge from that is probably the Mona Lisa uh, painted by Leonardo da Vinci and it's, it's fascinated people for hundreds of years the sort of ambu ambiguous smile behind the lady and, and what the meaning is and why it was commissioned all those have been studied endlessly and there's still a lot of mystery around it. Now the Renaissance wasn't confined just to Italy, it spread north, something called the Northern Renaissance. And one of the reasons behind that was that the Low Countries, modern day Belgium and Holland, were very prosperous. And they made their money from uh, producing cloth uh, and selling it. And um, that led to uh, disposable income, which again led to uh, being displayed in things like portraits and uh, improved architecture and so on. Uh, so we'll be looking now at some of the most well-known examples of the Northern Renaissance. This portrait of Arnolfini and his wife by Jan van Eyck in 1434 is, an, is a good example um, because in fact the person being portrayed was an Italian merchant living in Bruges showing, showing how trade had become international. And what's so clever about this portrait is that there's a reflection in the mirror uh, which manages to show the couple from the other side. So extremely complex techniques and lots of symbolism and allegory uh, in this in this portrait, which I'm not going to go into now, but it's a fantastic example which you can research yourself further. Now the Renaissance was not just about art, it was also about philosophy. And here is a picture of the most well-known philosopher, Erasmus. Uh, he was Dutch and he was a leading humanist scholar. Humanism is difficult to define, but essentially it combined aspects of Christianity with aspects of classical thought, and it was about education and self-improvement. Another leading humanist at the time, Sir Thomas More, looked remarkably like Erasmus, um, but that's an important philosophical um, development that you need to be aware of. We're finishing with uh, the ambassadors by Hans Holbein. This portrait combines so many aspects of the Renaissance in it. First of all, globalization. You've got two globes there. You've got various instruments of navigation. There, the arms of the young men are resting on Ottoman rug from the Middle East. You've also got other aspects of the Renaissance, such as um, developments in music. Um, there's a book of music open there. There's a variety of musical instruments. But finally, you've also got uh, a skull, uh, which is reminding the viewer of their mortality. For their wealth and influence, they too are mortal. But it's an outstanding um, picture which you can research if you go on the National Portrait Gallery's website.